Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me in another of my wonderful interviews. I've got a man who's probably been on the channel now more times than I have. Uh, pretty <laughs> close to it. And we're talking about a subject that's very dear to my heart and indeed probably everybody uh, watching to a certain degree, certainly if you're in the UK and you're struggling with your council tax. What is the sodding remedy to this nonsense that's been thrust, thrust at, it, at us by men in... In, in smart suits, in, in dark rooms, in smoke-filled rooms, coming up with legislation that makes us feel that we are all indebted and slaved to them and we have to pay because they said so. Let's bring back the one and only Sovereign Pete. Sovereign Pete, welcome back to the show. How are you doing? Good to see you again, Richard. It's lovely to have you back. Um, I, I think that uh, I should be uh, awarding you, what is it, one of those... Um, <laughs> What are they called? Um, oh, I've forgotten the term now. The joke's gone out the window. I've made a complete oh. arse of myself. Um, a, a t you know those sort of tickets that you give to people, um, on a, like on a train when you do it regularly? Oh, uh, yes. I, I know what you mean. Yeah, I, no, I you can't think of it. I can't think of it either. Perhaps we should call this the, the Richard and Pete show. <laughs> there we go. The Richard and Pete show. The baldies, the baldies are taking over the yes, world. Yes, that's it. Uh, at about blooming time. Who needs that hair? Don't need However, it. <laughs> we are here to discuss the uh, the one and only. The, the, well, April the first is coming. You know that joke day when the bills hit the. Well, I think they come in before that, don't they? The council tax bills. They do, and, and people are primed up. But on the first of um, April, twenty twenty four. The jester will be out laughing at you saying, ha ha, ho ho, you've got to pay the council tax. <laughs> but the jester's going to be punched in the face by Sovereign Pete because he has a remedy. Yes, that's right. Uh, and it's not just my work. I mean, it's the, the Sovereign Fraternity team. Um, so a lot of people have put their um, hard-earned uh, work into this, you know, blood, sweat and tears, if you like. So this is a voluntary um, uh, a project that we've all contributed so just before we get into it i want to just mm. cover a few basics so, so people understand because you know me i'm always about the mindset first yes there's too many people out there and they're looking for magic paperwork to save the day and i go no, that's not how it works it's got to be your right mindset so regarding the council tax if you have a mindset where you think oh i've got to pay it i've got to pay it but i don't want to i want to get out of paying it you're mm. going to lose this game all right, because right. you've already lost, because you've already thought that you should be paying it. So you've got to have the right mindset. And the mindset is, why am I obligated to pay it? Okay, that's the mindset, and then you can move forward. So also what I want to try and do is get across to people and get rid of these corporations. Stop thinking about the council is doing this. No, it's a person doing this. A living, breathing man or woman is doing this to you. So I have £2,000 here. Let's see if we can get it on the capital. Oh. There we go. There's, uh, oh, hang on. There's two grand, all right, £2,000 in, uh, I know it's fiat, and I know it's not actually, yeah, it's here you go. There. Can I pass Come this on. over to you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so much for Zoom. If only we'd done this face to face. <laughs> oh, well. God, I could have been £2,000 richer. <laughs> I could have afforded the petrol. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, so there's £2,000. I want everyone to visualise that because that represents a typical month's salary for the average person. The average person earns about £26,000 a year, and that's about oh, two blimey. grand. Yeah, it's about... I'm going to go to work. Forget this, Mark. <laughs> I'm going to actually earn a job. But wait a minute. Some of that goes to the government. I'm not quite so sure about that. Yes, exactly yeah. right. You know, so, yeah, you don't get all of this. You know, you get your pay your income tax and your VAT and all the rest of it. Your yeah, fuel insurance. tax. Yeah, fuel I couldn't tax. get to you because most of it would have disappeared on fuel tax because, because you're, you know, you're in some remote country in, uh, uh, you know, on a different planet, <laughs> the sovereign peak planet. Yes. <laughs> so you got the two grand. So everyone's yep. visualising that. So just try and visualise the two grand and just think for a moment. That also represents a typical council tax bill, roughly £2,000. Now, you've got to try and visualize the fact that you've got to work to earn that. It's going to take you a month at least to earn this £2,000. Yeah. And then you're just giving it away to someone else. It's now gone. Poof, right? It's gone. Oh. Yeah, where's your £2,000 gone? I feel so down. <laughs> so you get the £2,000. That could have took you on. You could have gone on holiday, done your house improvements, bought a new car. Got You know, how much? £2,000. That could really, you know, solve a lot of put your heating on. You're going to mm -hmm. buy some food, but that money's gone. You've given it away. Now, this is the mindset thing. You've got to try and think, who am but, I giving but, it but, to? But, 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 be fair, on. my bins have been emptied. 
<laughs> oh yeah, two thousand pounds worth of emptying my bins. I think I'm yes. getting ripped off. <laughs> I think I'll empty my own bins. And 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 <laughs> I have played. I have paid for the police to intimidate me a yes. lot when the bailiffs come around and the enforcement <laughs> to stand there and go. Yes. No, we're just making sure there's no affray happening. So I've paid for a, a police force that doesn't seem to be on my side. No, nope. absolutely right. So you've just given it away. So it's now in the pockets of someone else. Mm. So someone else is now living it up, living it up on your £2,000, right? So they're now going on holiday. They're having a the golf in course it. or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. They're living it up now. They can afford their new car or whatever it is. They've got the £2,000. So people have got to start thinking, who am I giving this to? Who has mm. got my £2,000? So that's the mindset. I'm going to just give a few little pointers just before we get into the remedy. Um, Hmm. First of all, one thing that people have to remember is tax is contractual. And you go, well, what does that mean? Well, what does that mean, Pete? Yeah, let me explain how that works. You see, in the olden days, on the olden days, when taxes were issued, they were issued to serfs and slaves. Okay, you were owned, you were property. So you were taxed as a serf. You know, in the olden days, the king would would tax you for living on his land because you were a serf, a slave. Now, unless the government's going to step up and say, yeah, we're all slaves, and that's why we've got to pay tax, I don't think they're going to do that. You mean actually admit where we are? Yes, admit the truth and say, oh, are we, are we slaves? Because if we are... Yeah, I've got something to say about that, you <laughs> exactly. lying swine. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We all have something to say about that. So they can't say that, they can't admit that. So they have to go down the road that it's contractual, which means that you have to enter into a contract for the tax to be paid. In other words, right. you g- agree to the tax. So today, all tax is voluntary, all of it. Income tax, VAT, every single form of tax today is voluntary, and you must enter into a contract to actually pay it. So everyone must know that. So if you're being asked to pay tax, the next question you should be is, can I see the contract, please? Right. Yes. It's a bit difficult when you buy a Mars bar, let's say, and you go, look, there's mm. some value-added tax on that. Could I see the contract, please, for the VAT, please? Yes. Sorry to hold you all up. I know you all want to get home to Christmas, and it's only January, but so, but on the tax that you can do something about. Yes, yes. In fact, you, there is actually a way that you can actually reduce your shopping bill because <laughs> they are supposed to knock the tax off if you are not a UK resident, but that's another story. <laughs> I live on another planet most of the time, <laughs> yes. so I, I try and use that ruse. It's only UK residents that are registered that pay tax because you were contracted. So, but anyway, ah, yes. I also want to touch on the fact about bailiffs. A lot of people don't understand what bailiffs are, right? There's only one form of bailiff that you should actually listen to, and that is called court-appointed bailiffs. And they are the ones who actually work for the court, and they have sworn an oath, and they are using due process to knock on your front door, which means they have a liability order, they have an original case number, they have an original case that was tried in court, and there's an original contract that backs the whole thing up. That is a court-appointed bailiff, okay? These people do not deal with council tax in any way, shape, or form, because they can't. What you will be dealing with is what is called debt collectors. Enforcement agents. Enforcement agents, debt collectors, whatever. They're all legal titles. They're in the private. They've got nothing to do with the courts at all. They've got no authority whatsoever, zero. No paperwork backing them up. Now, we don't quite have time to go into everything regarding debt validation, but if people want to learn more about debt validation, if they go on the web part, website, sovereignproject.live, download the document, it explains debt validation and novation agreements, deeds of assignment, and it explains it all for you. So if you want to learn more, there's a document for you. Um, but I need to, people to understand about bailiffs, um, debt validation, which we just touched on. And when you learn this, what you'll be able to do is when someone opens the front door, like a debt collector, you'll serve them yeah. notice. You'll hand over a notice. And you're, well, I've had them knocking on my door. Yes, I know. I've had them. Swines. Yes. And what we need to be able to do is serve them notice, you see, and say, I'm not even going to talk to you. Here, I'm serving you notice. And then you can sue them because they're actually committing fraud. But you can only do that if you understand this remedy that we're going to get into in a sec. Right. Um, very quick quick, uh, very quick thing about council creation. All right, A lot of people can't understand this corporation thing, that councils are corporations, right? Well, basically, all councils were created through statutes, Okay, so statutes created councils in the olden days. And you go, okay, then, well, who created the statutes? And that who was created a... the statutes, Pete? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Which was government. And you go, well, hang on a minute. Who created the you, government you, statutes? 
She goes, hang on a minute. So statues created the government and then the government... It's like created... a circle. It's like a circle in a spiral. It is, like isn't a it? Thingy, diggy, do. <laughs> it's one of these, like, circular arguments, isn't it? It's going around in circles. You go, so that's complete nonsense, you know, so don't get pulled into that. Um, but today, modern-day councils are corporations. Now, touch on a corporation. There's three types of corporation. Well, there's more, but I'm going to give you three basics. One's political, mm. one's religious, and one's business corporations. And all three are created to gain wealth and power. That's what they're designed to do, all of them. Okay. Now, these councils used to be a political corporation when they were set up, set up by statutes. But now that they've got Dunn's numbers and they've now become businesses, private businesses, they're now corporate businesses. And that was in 1973, I believe. So all councils today, they've all got a Dunn's number. They're all uh, business corporations for profit. End of. That's the end of the argument. So that should kill that. Um, and oh, it won't. It won't kill it because I mean, I mentioned <laughs> that in a, in a monologue, and still people are saying, "Oh no, Richard, it's a load of old rubbish. It's not. They're they're not corporations. They 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 couldn't. They, somebody said um, it's not done. They don't have a Dun and Bradstreet number because they would have to be if it's that's American. It would be in the UK at company's house. <laughs> I can't help these people. I literally can't help these people. You know, when they can't even do some basic research, I tell them the truth. All you've got to do is check it out. And if they can't be bothered to do that, then I, I end the conversation. I go, okay, you don't want to learn, fine. But there's certain truths that I give out, and if people don't want to believe it, it's up to them. Go and put your mask on and play, you know, Disease X or whatever. I don't care. <laughs> Thanks. We have now just been demanaged. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Can I but we'll beep press that? on regardless. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. We all love a bit of disease X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z. Whatever it might be. <laughs> So anyway, um, so now we've got some basics. Uh, we can actually get into the council tax remedy that we're going to share with everybody. This is free to everybody. You can go on the sovereignproject.live website, download it, help yourself. It's on the Sovereign Wiki. So, so it's before there. we do this, let me just ask a question that I know people will, they sort of often ask me this, and I, I am very remiss at not doing this because I very much like all my guests and, and I don't want to put them on the spot. But sure. first, the question is, how do we know it works? Right. Let's get some truth. Now, I've, I think I'm on the record of saying this before, but the truth behind the system is there is no system. Okay? There is no system. That's the truth. Right. Bottom line, there is no system. Okay? The people who control this system create... But there is no system. The, which is no system. That's right. They, they create the illusion that there is. So people think they're doing the right thing. They're being honorable because they're following the rules. Now, the people within courts, the people, solicitors, the people like the police do not follow their own rules. They don't. Yes. We know no, that. We've seen that. Correct. Absolutely right. So that's why I always say to people, there's no magic paperwork. Don't think you can get a piece of paperwork, send it off, and then all your problems will go away. It isn't the paperwork. It's you, your sovereignty. You're saying, I've had enough, right? Well, You're not living is. in fear anymore. So that's the truth. It's not paperwork. So people are saying, well, does this remedy work? It's not the remedy. It's you. It's me. It's you. It's the people watching this saying, I'm not putting up with this. That's the truth. And when you get enough people massing, you know, within the, I don't know what you want to call it, like it's the freedom, truth. I keep, it's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, I know. We, no, who, no, we haven't really addressed who we are, really, are we? As a, as a collective people telling the yeah. truth and freedom and sovereignty. But we know about, who you mean. How about, how about sovereign, freedom and truth? SFT movement. SFT. I'm going to, I'm going to label it SFT movement. Better write that down because yes, you forget it. Yes, let's write that down, will. please. SFT. Right, everybody at home, S are you following along? SFT. <laughs> Sounds like something out of Thunderbirds. FAB, SFT. SFT. Oh, that's great. There we are. to the rescue. SFT. SFT. I think we coined something there, Pete. I think we have. I think we have. So the, the Sovereign Freedom Truth Movement or SFT movement, I think that's to, that's better than it's, it's a mouthful. So that's yep. it. So the SFT movement, <laughs> which is all of us. More and more people are joining the SFT movement, okay? Every single day. We have 10 people a day signing up to the Sovereign Project, all right? And I know people subscribe to your channel and all the rest of it. So this is massing. More and more people are waking up. That's where the true power is. It's right. us calling out the system. Yes. And that's the true power. So this it's is what this numbers. remedy is. This remedy right. is calling out the system. This is what we're going to do. We're going to call them out. 
Um, so we can get into get. We're, we're literally going to use their own acts and statutes against them. Excellent. That's what we're going to do. So because effectively, that is like taking their swords and their shields and saying, "Ha ha! <laughs> you shouldn't have put them down, should you? Where we knew to, where to find them by putting it online on legislation.co.uk because we have found your tools and yes. thick shields. And now take that." <laughs> <laughs> We're going to use their own weapons against them. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. If nothing else, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're getting a good laugh. Yes. Yeah, you've got to laugh. You've got to laugh. You've got, got to get rid laugh of the at these issues. That's right. Get rid of the fear. Treat it as a joke. The system's a joke. All right. The police are a joke. The, 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 the justice system's a joke. Even calling it a justice system is a joke. <laughs> but anyway. Yes. We, 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 we'll get cracking. We'll try and blast through this, uh, this remedy if we can. I want to get it done in an hour. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> so I can because it gets cold in my then. studio. We're filming in February, and um, it gets it, the temperature. You know, you switch everything on, and then the temperature all starts dropping down, and I'll be an ice cube by the end of it. <laughs> Pete's probably in a lovely, warm, centrally oh, yeah. heated house. Yes, yeah, so I've got yet felt. to light the fires and get the <laughs> sticks and rub them together. Anyway, we're prevaricating. <laughs> get your log burner going. That'll, that'll it, warm you up. It, Absolutely. Do you want me to put the stuff on the screen yep. as we go through it? Let's right, pop it up for now. everyone Press to see. A few technical buttons here and yes. we'll see if we can find it. Here we go. Great stuff. Let me try and read this for everybody. And this document is free to download, like I mentioned before, on the Sovereign Project um, uh, wiki page. And uh, so this is the basic um, remedy. So I'm going to go through this very quickly. So contrary to assumed belief, the council tax you pay does not pay for council services, such as emptying your bin, street lighting, or cutting the grass. It does, however, pay for such things as MP pensions, MP offshore accounts and personal investments, Lobo loans, and, of course, military accounts that fund terrorism in other countries. You can go and research this. And I know Rich has had all the guests on explaining all this, so you don't have to come to me about that. Uh, the council tax is a fraud perpetrated on... 26.4 million homes or dwellings as called by the people who work for the council. Now, a private home is not taxable. Now, this is how they get into the legalese, right? So they get into the legalese and they do some dirty tricks, but a private home is not taxable. You cannot tax a private home, but a dwelling is, which is owned by your slave master. So that's how they get away with it. So this fraud is extorting money from hardworking families who are finding it increasingly difficult to make ends meet. We all feel a pinch, petrol's going up, you know, the cost of heating your home and all the rest of it's going up, food's going up. We're head, heading into hyperinflation, right? So people mm. really got to get into this now. So with many being forced to choose between eating, heating and paying council tax, the people who work for the council tax department do not care about you or your family and have no sympathy or empathy to the financial problems they are causing you as long as they are paid and are living the good life. Remember that. These mm. people at the council don't care about you. You can't appeal to their sympathies. Oh, I can't afford it. They don't care. They're taking you two grand. You know, they're living it up. So it's time to stop, uh, for this crime to stop. And this, doc this document shall prove that not only are you not obligated to pay council tax, but the people working for the council are acting in a criminal manner and committing barratry. OK, so barratry basically means using their position of power for financial gain. All right. Which is what they're right. doing. Now, that's what barratry is. And in the olden days, uh, the punishment, it was a capital offense. So you, you would be hung. OK, so that's in, in today, modern day barratry. I think you go to prison for seven years or uh, pay a very, very large fine, depending on the situation. So. Some people might say, mm -hmm. and it's not me saying this at all, <laughs> they might say that was a pretty good punishment in the past for Barrettry. I'll go along with that. I agree with you on that one. You'd stop all these MPs doing what they're doing, wouldn't they? Mm. <laughs> so if we go to the council as a corporation, all right, so we are now going to use the government's own legislation to prove they are indeed a corporation because they say right. so. Yeah. So to understand this fraud, we need to realize that every council is nothing more than a corporation with no authority at all, and it's no different than any other privately owned for-profit company. And we shall use the government's own legislation to prove this. And this is where we've, we've done the homework for everybody. We've got all this listed on the remedy that you can download. Each one of these acts and statutes, we've, 
we've provided the hyperlink to the government's own website so you can go and look it up. We've downloaded it in PDF form, so you've got that as well. And we've also gone into greater detail on every act and statute detailing the, the crime that's been committed. So, wow. You've done everything, haven't you? Everything. It's done. I mean, you've opened the tin, you've provided the <laughs> spoon, you've got the dog meat there. All you've got to do is shove it in your mouth. Yes, that's it. We've even done templates for you. So people who want to write a notice, we've done you a template for you. And we've even done you some flyers. So you can, if you want to go door to door and spread in the word, we've even created a flyer for you. So we start with uh, the Local Government Act 1888, Chapter 41, Part 5, Section 79, Paragraph 1. And it quite clearly states, it says, the council of each con uh, county shall be a body corporate. There it is. Okay. There it is. So, um, so that goes right back to 1888. Yeah. That is incredible, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And we'll get into the reason why these councils were set up because this is another thing. These councils are supposed to pro provide um, a service to the people mm. with no fee, no charge. But we'll get into that. We've highlight. We're going to highlight that as well. Okay. So we'll go down to the next page. So yeah, here we go. So further to this. And something that is not divulged by the people who work for the council is that since the year 1888, all councils have taken on the duties and liabilities of the inhabitants of the county. Now, you notice the name inhabitants. Mm. They, the council don't use that word. They use the word called resident because they're pulling you into commerce. And that's how they're trying to sneak you in and make you liable to pay them. So if you're an inhabitant, are you in the private? Yes. Technically, you are living on the land. OK, you, you, you inhabit the land. Right. You cannot be taxed. Technically, you've already paid the tax to the king and the king is now providing services to the people who live upon the land. That's the olden day version. Right. Okay. So, um, what does this mean? Uh, this mm. means the liability of any costs involved is their responsibility to cover, not yours. This is what the council's not telling you. And this so they should be paying these bills, not us. Yes, yes. Now, the way it works today, I mean, I don't want to go too deep into how the financial system works, but I'm going, I'll make it simple. Let's pretend mm. that the taxes that you've already paid goes to the government, and then the government gives it to the council, and then they pay for the services. That is how it officially is supposed to work. So you've already paid for the bins to be emptied and the, the grass to be mown through your income tax. So we're paying twice. Yes, correct. You're getting hit with another bill which they can't send you. This is the fraud. They do, they mm. do not have the right to send you a bill unless you put in an order with the council. And you ask if you ask for the council to do a job that is outside their duties and liabilities, like put a drop curb in for your extended mm. driveway then that's when the council can send you a bill because you placed an order. Right. We'll, we'll, yeah. get, we'll get into Nobody's that. Nobody's played an, an, an order for the council tax, Exactly they? right. And that's why it's fraud. You can't receive a bill unless you placed an order. Well, that's the fraud. Okay. So we move on to the... Yeah, so we're just going to confirm this, which is the Local Government Act 1888, Chapter 41, Part 5, Section 79. And as you will see, Paragraph 2, all duties and liabilities of the inhabitants of a county shall become the uh, duties and liabilities of the council of such county there it is done black and white okay so then if that's not enough if people go oh, well you know council's not not a uh, corporation right okay well, let's take a look at the next act which is the local government act 1972 chapter 70 part one section two subsection three and it says it again each council mentioned in subsection 1 or 2 above shall be a body corporate by the name the council or the district council, as the case may be. So it's even it's reiterated in the 1972 Act. So this argument is done. If anyone out there says, oh, the council's not a corporation, I'm, I'm just going to call them out and say, you're stupid at this point, because the government even says so. Yeah. <laughs> what more do you want? Okay. Now... We'll get into the fact that, as we mentioned earlier, the council was originally created by statute code, um, which was created by a government using statute code, and it's a circular argument, mm. but making them a political corporation. Now they've become a, a 
a business corporation because they now have DUNS numbers. So today, all councils, however they may be named, are nothing more than private, uh, privately owned for-profit corporations, each having their own DUNS number. DUNS stands for Data Universal Numbering System and are issued by a private corporation called Dun & Bradstreet. Each unique nine-digit number is issued to each business entity uh, with its primary use being for credit reporting. Now, I don't want to go too deep. That's really tied into Sester KV Trust, but for now, we'll move on. don't want to complicate okay. things. Now, I've even created a list here. There's 10, I think I put in this document. Here's a list of a selection of councils with their business DUNS number, like North, East, Lincolnshire Council. There's the number. Now, what we've also done, I mean, we've done all the homework for you people. I, I mm. can't make it any simple. We've created a list of what virtually every single council and their DUNS number, and we've put it up for free on the Sovereign Wiki. It's free. Look it up. So if you live in a certain council, I think we've put it in alphabetical order. Go and look it up. And there's the DUNS number. But I've provided... 10 here for you so we'll skim past that now that we have established that the council is nothing more than a corporation acting as a private for-profit company whereby they not you have taken on the liability to pay for all costs we can cover the many violations and criminal acts they perpetrate every day and we've got at least 10 listed here so it says violation of acts now, below is a list detailing some of the acts violated, resulting in crimes that have been committed by employees of the council and by extension, the bailiffs. Bailiffs in quotes, because, we're you know, debt collectors, that sort of stuff, you know. Yes. Yep. So this is where we've got to target the, the, the perpetrator. It is, it's the people who work for the council tax department. They're the ones doing this, Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to serve them notice. I'm going to say, look, you are doing this. And if you don't cease and desist, then you're going to be in serious trouble. And this is the people saying this. Mm. So we've listed 10. We've actually found, I think we've got 24 going on for 25 access statutes that are being violated. This is phase one of this council tax remedy. So we're just going to deal with 10 for now. And then yeah. we're going to, in a few, probably month or two, we're going to issue another 10 and then another 10. So I'll just touch these very quickly. Um, so that's the count, uh, County Courts Act 1984, Forgery Act 1913, Fraud Act 2006, Misrepresentation Act 1967. The list goes on. Magistrate yeah. Court Rules 1981. Now, to see the full details of each act listed above, see the Council Employee Crimes in Detail document. So within this download, there's another document, and it covers each one of these in turn, and it will say why it is being violated. So if you want to learn, we've done that for you. That's all done for you. So now we're going to get into Slavery Act. Because what people don't realize is what the council are doing is treating you like a slave. How dare they? Yes. <laughs> Absolute shower. Because... <laughs> You know, when you start learning this stuff, if you get your correct mindset and you know it's all commerce, you know it's all about contracts, then the council themselves can't um, demand payment without a contract. Can't right. be done. Except that when people say that, they keep going back to some 1993, um, whatever it is, Legislation Act. Yes. And they keep going, oh, but it's all done there in the smoke-filled rooms <laughs> by people who've got three heads and two toes. And, uh, the, you know, you've just got to pay it. Don't ask us to explain it. Just give us the sodding money, you yes. know, or we send the boys with sticks around, which, you, you know, not That's... that they act, literally come with sticks, no. but they do stick at coming round. They do. And they, they do. stick around and try to it, it get your van or your car, the swines. They do. Um, now, the thing is, this is why we are serving the people who work for the council notice, because we're going to say, OK, maybe you don't know how to read and you don't know how to read these acts and statutes. But if you know how to read these acts and statutes, there is no obligation for us to pay anything unless we place an order. It's that simple. You know, let's let's uh, let me find the so, thing. I just lost it again. Here we go. Slavery Act. So we'll get into the Slavery Act. OK. So, the employees at the council tax department cannot make a claim upon you without first providing the written evidence of an agreed-upon contract, otherwise you're a slave. 
this cannot be provided, oh, sorry, if this cannot be provided or a claim is made that they do not need a contract and they're saying this. And that's what they say. I know. They can't say this. They're committing a, they're committing a crime at this point. This is a torturous act. No one has the right to tell someone else, you're going to pay me even though there's no contract between us. Well, that's no difference between carjackers or a mm. mugger. They, they or a what? Yeah, they, yeah. Oh, a mugger, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. a mugger, yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting, getting mugged. Hand over your, your wallet, hand over yeah. your, your... What? So, if they make that claim, that they do not need a contract to be able to demand you pay them, then this is either extortion with menace or slavery. Again, this is not up for debate, right? If you've got the correct mindset, you'll know this. You've got course. So, we've got the Modern Slavery Act, uh, 2015, Chapter 30, Part 1, Section 3, and Paragraph 1 and 5. Now, I'll just paraphrase, but this basically means um, if you exploit somebody for any form of benefit, then you are committing, you are violating this, this act. Uh, and, of course, receiving money is actually a benefit. So, a benefit of any kind. So, uh, I think Paragraph 5, Part C, to enable another person to acquire benefits of any kind. So, what that would be is that the council are trying to extort you for money, and if you don't pay them, they will send so-called debt collectors around to extort money from you. That's slavery, using their own acts and statutes. There we go. So it's clear, you know, if people don't get this, then I can't help them at this point. I think they are getting it because you've put it, it in such simple terms that, you know, I think people are getting it. The, the problem is that people sometimes just do, do not believe it. They do not believe that there is a way out of the maze. Yes. Oh, yeah, I get that. I mean, it takes you a very long time to navigate the maze. I mean, I mm. get that. So if you're new to this, this might sound daunting, daunting. But there's trailblazers out there that have navigated the maze for years and years and years. And we're just passing down this information. So you don't have yes. to go through the maze. You know, we've, we've done the work for you. There you go. So, um, clearly, to be on the receiving end of any payment of any kind is a benefit to the recipient. And if the recipient had no right to claim said payment, which they don't, but use force, threats, or deception, and they're using deception and they're using uh, for force and threats, to attain such payment, then explo uh, exploitation has occurred. To forcibly exploit someone is to subject them to slavery. And here's a key. A slave has the right to fight for their slave uh, to, to fight, fight for their, for their slavery. Yeah. Yes. Fight for your slavery. Fight for your slavery, you know dear boy. Some people do. <laughs> yes, I think most of us do because we don't realise we do it. We acquiesce all the bleeding time. Yes. So a slave has the right to fight for their freedom. freedom. Correct. Absolutely. So you've got your fight. Yeah. You've got the right to fight for your freedom. There's a few Fs. <laughs> mm. <laughs> My lips are getting a bit dry. I'm going to have some lemonade. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, that's better. Right, so what do we do? Now, all this information is in the download for everybody. So what we're going to do is we're going to contact public servants. Right. So now that you have this information, you are in the position to contact various public servants, whereby you mandate them to cease this criminal behavior. Okay. Now, this mm. remedy is aimed at anybody who wants to do it. Anyone in the SFT movement. So this is people who, for example, and I feel sorry for these people who literally can't afford their council tax. They can't afford it. They've got I know, no money. It's there. dreadful. And then and then they have not only can they not afford it, but they can't afford to lose those possessions which they've yes. got in order to go to work and earn some money to put food in the mouths of their children. I mean, it is yes. absolutely disgusting. I agree with you, mate. It is absolutely disgusting. It's got to stop. So I feel sorry for those people. But this yeah. remedy, you can use it. So those people who can't afford it, here you go. Now, it's also for people who possibly like me and yourself or whatever watching who, yeah, you could afford it, but we're not going to be ripped off anymore. We're done. Yes. Well, you know? yeah, yeah, but yeah, but hold on one second. I mean, it's all very well. I'm just going to get you back on the screen yep. by some special magic of technology. <laughs> Great. Um, it's all very well um, saying, oh, well, you could afford it. But the principle, the morality yes. of of even though you can afford it and you might you might be one of those people and go, oh, well, it, you know, yeah. a couple of thousand pounds. I get ten thousand a month. It doesn't really matter to me. I'll pay. I'll pay the two thousand a year because it's only whatever it is. And you think, well, actually, do you want to be paying for terrorists to be arming other terrorists with weapons that kill yes. men, women, and children? 
which is effectively what's going on. Yeah. And can you sleep at night if you do that, even if you've got a very comfortable bed? Mm. And, and so moralistically, and you're not helping your fellow man, you're not acting honourably if you are paying for terrorism. I agree. Absolutely, I agree. So, um, yeah, so I yeah. would blow that argument that just because people can afford it. Because I absolutely think that people should contribute to their community if they're getting benefits from it and, and all of that. But that's a completely different argument, which the yes. ta council tax is not providing. No. The, the, the council tax is giving you that 5G, that surveillance TV, the yep. 20 mile an hour stuff, yep. all the net zero crap that nobody actually wants. Yeah. And, uh, and you're paying for it. Yes, yeah, speed bumps so. all over the place and, you know, you les all over the place. I, I don't want any of this. I didn't order any of this. I don't want it. I don't I want didn't order. lanes. Yeah, Tackle show me pass. the order that said, uh, dear sir, I'd like to order a <laughs> uh, load of uh, low traffic neighbourhoods yes. and 15 minute cities and 5G to radiate my brain. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, if you can uh, provide all of that, then I'll happily uh, pay the invoice. But as you haven't got one, and I know I haven't been that drunk to write those sort of invoices. Mm, I'd have to be um, pretty drunk for that. I think you would. <laughs> with somebody twisting your arm like this. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to anyway. put an order in. So, can you please put me some speed bumps outside my house so that the coil springs on my car break every two years and my car then fails an MOT? Yes. Yeah, I and yeah, and then you these. can catch me out because I didn't know the MOT was due. Thanks very much. <laughs> yeah, and then they hit me with a fine. Yeah, and then because my MOT is not valid, suddenly the tax is up and, this, yes. and, and the insurance won't pay. Yeah, we... Anyway. I don't remember <laughs> ordering any of that. No. But you're right. Right. Let but anyway, so the... this, 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 this can be for anybody, you know, people who can't afford it, people who want to fight, you know, um, you know, I know some people might be a little bit panicky or whatever, but you can still send this in, you know what I mean? You can still get involved. The ramifications, um, I mean, let me just uh, say that this or ask you this. Sure. Um, there's no, I mean, we're, 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 uh, there's no problem. There's no sort of ramifications from people if they do these remedies and challenge. I mean, because you're yeah. challenging yeah. a truth. Correct. And you're saying, um, yeah, OK, you know, I'll uh, I could well be paying your thing. But let me just point out these things you've done wrong. And if you can prove to me that you're not doing all these things, then um, yeah. we've got no problem. Yeah. But as you ca can't give me an invoice uh, and I didn't order any of this <laughs> and you're actually liable for all of this. Yes. And you're acting fraudulently yes. in all of this. It does rack up that actually out of the two parties, I come off better. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that you lot should be in prison. Yes. Having stalking. some very nice porridge, which unfortunately I end up bloody paying for <laughs> yes. out of the taxes. <laughs> I mean, that's, a, you know, it's a stupid. And that, isn't that a weird and that's another irony. If you yes. don't pay all these bills, these tax bills and what have you, and eventually that, you know, they take all your possessions. And if that's not enough at auction, yeah. they'll put you in prison. Yes. Which uh, ultimately your, uh, your neighbours are paying for. Not quite. Oh. Yes. So see, the way it works is if you go to prison, um, what you've actually done, and you didn't know this, or your solicitor probably did it for you, is that you are signing for a bond. So when you go to prison, you are signing for a multi-million pound or dollar bond. The prison co corporation makes money on that bond, the interest on it, and you stay in that prison until a certain prison term is up and then the bond is released okay because if you ever wondered why if you go to america some of these people who go to prison they've found 100 and, you know 167 years prison sentence and you go oh hang on a minute how can i be in prison for 167 years no that's the life of the bond that the court has created and you're signing for and you've been sent to a warehouse as collateral against that bond until it's paid off so That's you're telling me that the American prisons aren't giving you incredible health care in prison <laughs> so that you do live to that 167th year. <laughs> I'm free. I'm, yes. uh, and oh. then... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, so yeah, a lot of the prisons, you, you're just creating... So that's another, another scam as well. It is. It's the same like, you know, we self-insure and all the rest of it. And the same with a soldier. If you sign up to join an army, they, the army creates a bond for a few million. And if you die then the army gets the bond. But anyway, that's another subject. Right. Writing to the... Um, writing, yes. Let me go so back writing to the doc document. To the public that. servants. Yes. So now yeah. we have all this information. Okay. So 
You should also make them aware that they shall be observing uh, observed to ensure they follow the guidelines of the seven principles of public life, which is also known as the Nolan Principles, which covers the following. And <laughs> it's almost a joke. So I did a video this. about the Nolan Principles yes. in a monologue some months ago. You did. You did. And it, it's a joke, isn't it? When you read integrity. Yeah. <laughs> Selflessness, integrity. Have you got any integrity? Um, oh, hang on a minute. I think we did have it. Someone's put it in the bin by mistake. Objectivity, accountability, yep. openness. Yep. Ah, yeah, we're not very open. <laughs> Honesty? Honesty! Ah, you, damn it, you've got us there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, we'll take that down out of our... Um, <laughs> uh, off, off the front of the building to say that we're an honest, nice, friendly council. Yes. And, and leadership. Well, oh, yes. It's a joke. So, we all know about the Nolan Principles, um, so you can quote that. So, failure to comply with these principles and your mandate shall be seen as aiding and abetting with criminals and benefiting from criminal activity. And there is an aiding and abetting act. There um, is. But I can't remember what it is, but it's something like 1886 or something. You know, it's, yep. a, it's a long time ago and it hasn't been changed, so you can't do it. Absolutely. And we're going to be getting into that in phase two, phase three over the spring and summer, because we're going to be Thanks. dishing out multiple acts and statutes. Everyone who's getting involved in this now, there's more to come. This is just phase one. Right. Um, so anyway, so who do you send it to? So you've got this yeah. notice. So you can you can send it to the following public servants should be contacted in regards to this criminal action. And we've created a template. It's in the download. It's in a notice of interest. So what you're actually doing is you're sending a notice of interest to either the local MP, mayor, head of the council tax department, section 13A officer and section 151 officer. What is a section 13A officer? Okie dokie. We can get into that because we've put a explanation for it. So if we just oh, go... Oh, yeah, here it is. Uh, sorry, um, I didn't read that. Yeah. There it is. So if we go to the... Um, oh, I'll just get this up on mine. There we go. Section 13A officer. So the Section 13A1C of the Local Government Finance Act 1992. Oh, hmm, where have I heard that before? Yeah, that rings bell. It does, doesn't it? It, it does. Uh, provides the council with additional di discretionary powers to enable it to reduce a person's council tax liability where statutory discounts, exemptions and reductions do not apply. There shall be a member of staff working for the council who is responsible for this uh, section and is referred to as a Section 13A officer. So basically, you can actually contact this guy and you can say, um, hang on a minute, can you provide me with my obligation to pay? And Just to zero my account, would you? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Either give me the obligation to pay, which is where I put an order in, or zero my account. Get rid of it. Yeah. It should be zero. And what we have here is a Section 151 officer which is uh, Section 151 of the Local Government Act uh, 1972, requires local authorities to make arrangements for the proper administration of their financial affairs and appoint an S-151 officer. So you go, what does he do? Mm. So his position is also known as a Chief Financial Officer, a CFO, and has the responsibility for... Not an FST, I <laughs> notice. It's not an FST, just no, no. in case people thought, you know, he is an FS and CFO. <laughs> yeah, every time you say um, SFT, I'm going to think Thunderbirds now. Yeah. <laughs> da -da 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 yes. SFT. SFT, everyone. <laughs> I've got to get a T-shirt, mate. And uh, anyway, <laughs> so... I think we should. I think we should, do not we? Yeah. And the yeah. Are you part of the SFT movement? That's it. <laughs> you know, Thunderbirds are go. So anyone out there can do T-shirts. Give me a call. I want to make a T-shirt with Thunderbirds on it. Um, anyway, so, so the responsibility of the chief financial officer is to ensure that there are no breaches of legislation and no fraud is committed. There you go. <laughs> well, he's obviously on holiday, hasn't he? Yeah, where's yeah, we, he been? He's been on holiday since 1888, and um, <laughs> we haven't seen hide nor hair of him. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I think he went to some anim some island where there were uh, cannibals. So it, it may be that he ended up as a dog's dinner. He could well have been. Because <laughs> he's made a dog's dinner of everything else. He right. absolutely has. He's, he's, he's gone AWOL because all this... He certainly has. 
So, yeah, so that's interesting. I mean, that is in and of itself is interesting that he is there to make sure there are no breaches in legislation and no fraud. And clearly he has. uh, Well, I mean, we could ask him to retire or quit his post (laughs) because he is of absolute no use whatsoever. Correct. (laughs) About as much use as a chocolate fire guard. Exactly. (laughs) So you can send this uh, notice to him as well. So um, you've got some targets there, everyone. Hmm. So, a uh, growing movement, or the SFT movement, <laughs> which is now growing. Yes. So, There's two of us. There's two, there's two of, of us. us. Yeah, come on, SFT. Um, <laughs> I keep thinking Thunderbirds. Um, the awareness of people regarding the fraud of council tax is growing exponentially on a daily basis and can no longer be suppressed. Therefore, it may be beneficial to add the following points to your notice. So people can write their own notices. We've created a template that people can use, but you can tweak them. Mm. And we've just written something like this, okay, so people can use this if they wish. So it should be noted that I'm not working alone when serving notice upon you, but I am, in fact, working as one of a growing network of the people by the people. (laughs) I love that. Yes, very good. The findings of the people shall be reported to the police. And if they fail to act upon this evidence, then it shall be deemed that the police are no longer following statute codes and no longer work for the people. Yes. These findings shall also be reported to the court. And if they should also fail to act, then it shall be taken as evidence that the courts no longer follow acts and statutes. Remember, we're calling them out on this. Yes, quite right. Once it has been determined that the justice system in its entirety no longer follow acts and statute, uh, then it shall be taken by the people that acts and statutes no longer apply to anyone, rendering all acts and statutes null and void, including the local government government finance act 1992. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) They keep quoting that at us. So, all right, then you're throwing acts of statutes at us. What about all these that you're violating? And if they're going, no, don't worry about them. Well, why are we listening to the Local Government Finance Act 1992 then? Exactly. So we'll just cover some final points because, again, this is mindset. People have got to know certain things before they can move forward. Now, remember, authority comes from you not a corporation, all right? A corporation is dead entity, has no authority whatsoever. Authority comes from you. Remember the word authority means author of. Yes. I am the author of my word, all right? My, my law is from me, within my freedom, within my, within my dominion. That's authority. So everyone has their own authority. There's no such thing as authorities, and a corporation is definitely has no authority. So the next one, to receive a bill, you must first place your order or the bill is fraudulent. All exactly, right. and we've we've stated that we never ordered anything. Exactly, exactly. So this is the first thing. If some people say, "Oh, well, I don't want to send this notice off because I haven't been um, defrauded," and I go, if the council have sent you a bill and you did not yes. place an order, that's the fraud. That is the fraud. Yeah. So every single person who's receiving a bill is being defrauded because you never placed an order. Now another one to receive a statement. You must first open an account or the statement is fraudulent. So, and this is another thing the council will send you statements. And you go, What do you need? What? Yeah. How can I what, receive what is a statement? a statement for? I'm so sorry. I haven't got an account with you. Yes. That's right. So you say, Well, can you please give me the account? And when did I sign up for this? I have to have signed up to, to have an account. Yes. Uh, another thing, customer. So if you are a customer, and remember the council call us customers, they have a customer department. So, okay. We're a customer then. You have the right to terminate your contract. If you're Yes, even though you haven't got a contract, even though you, you can still got... terminate. <laughs> I'd have... like to terminate the contract I haven't got, the one that you think <laughs> I have, but I haven't got it. So I'm terminating it. I'm just adding to your weight of work of saving you the hassle. <laughs> I'll terminate it. Thank you very much. Very kind of you, but goodbye. Exactly, exactly. Um, so this is like mindset stuff, you know, again, yeah, some of this is so obvious, and I'm thinking, how can't how people can't see this? Well, you have been doing it a long time, Pete, and some people are facing <laughs> this for the first time. We've all had our brains bent the wrong way, and yeah, we've yeah. got to do a Yuri Geller and try and unbend <laughs> yes. them, haven't we? Straighten out your brain. That's it. <laughs> unbend it. <laughs> so, um, next uh, point: you can only be obligated to pay through contract. If payment yes. is demanded. 
that is non-contractual, then this is extortion. And that's what we're saying. Exactly right. Because there is no contract. Um, so that means it's extortion. You cannot be demanded to make a payment. So the way of demand works, this is another thing people don't understand. That for, for someone to make a demand of payment, they have to go through legal due process. There has to be three notices. So let's say you place an order with me. I mm -hmm. then send you a bill and you just, just, then decide to ignore the bill. Well, I can do two other attempts, second attempt, third attempt with my bill. And then when you don't pay, now I can make a demand. Yeah. So you can't just pluck a demand out of thin air and say, oh, I'm just going to demand payment. Go, no, there's no original contract and I haven't received a bill three times. The trouble is, I mean, I've, I, I, let's say somebody sends you, uh, uh, you know, you drive, let's just say, for example, hypothetical case, you go to Bath for the Better Way Conference, mm -hmm. hypothetical, p couldn't possibly really <laughs> yeah. have happened. And you don't know that you've driven into a, a zone that is supposed to be, you know, cleaning the air. There's a big vacuum somewhere and it's sort yeah. of sucking in all the air and it spits out good air. And you've driven through it and they've gone, oh, my God, that van, <laughs> that black van with a bald bloke, let's say just hypothetically is bald. Uh, <laughs> and he's driven through this area and the vacuum now is completely and utterly broken because of you drove in. And so they say, well, there's a tariff. You should have been paying this tariff before you came in. And, you, and, and they send you the, these letters. And, of course, you have no knowledge because actually what they did with the tariff is not actually put it up nope. or the signage, so you didn't see it. But, you know, because they assumed that you were telepathic, you would have seen it. Correct. And then out of the blue, you and, and let's just say for the sake of argument, they send you these bills which has got your name spelt wrong for one thing, so you don't open it and you send it back. And they do this three times. Mm -hmm. And then... You get knock on the door. Well, come for five hundred quid, mate. Five hundred quid is all you're, all you're going to come and fill your tank of van. <laughs> I'm sorry. Could you speak slowly and, and in English? I'm feeling ever so. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm absolutely sure coming round at this time. Now I'm, I'm having tiffin with yes. a lovely young lady. Come for some of you. Now look here, young man. I'm not sure I quite understand. Go next door. He's a big violent sort of. So anyway, so let's say that you do this and yes. they send these things. But if there's no original contract, that's it. Correct. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter that you've, you know, because, um, I mean, there are these deemed contracts, which is sort of very weird word. Yes. It's Fraudulent. deemed that you would know that there is, this is an LTN zone or a ULES zone. And, and, and of course, there's no, uh, you see, if you go across the uh, Dartford Bridge or in the Dartford Tunnel, th there's plenty of signage there to say, you are now about to do this and this is the cost Yes. And this is how we'll take the money from you. And you've got 24 hours to pay. And you've got all of that information. Yes. Which, you know, you might go, oh, bugger. I didn't want to pay this. I didn't want to. But then there's still a side turning before you get to it to say, well, you can filter off here and moan in the verge. Yep. But at least you can get off the motorway. So yep. that's, you know, it's perfectly laudable in one way because they're yes. showing you this is if you want to cross the river at this point and, and save 400 miles by getting in a rowing boat and going around mm. the country you can do this That's but when you right. drive into an lt and you know and there's yeah. no signage and there's no nothing mm -hmm. and then they turn around and say oh we photographed you you made a mistake mm. ha, 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 ha. we're going to get the money from <laughs> and if we don't pay we're going to send the boys around I said, yes you shut up. <laughs> um, those those sort of contracts are, are null and void, aren't they? All of them, absolutely, yeah. Because you're absolutely correct. Uh, for it to be a lawful notice, the notice should be clearly written out and all the costs should be spelled out and everything should be on the notice. The amount should be there. This is why the ULES, and by the way, this is the same for speed cameras. I don't know if you noticed, but speed cameras, you know, they have, you just have a speed camera yeah. sign. There's no, there's no amount there's no, underneath. Yeah, you don't know how much you're going to, you know, oh, no. well, I'll just drive through this one. I can afford it. I don't care. Yeah. Whereas, you know, you don't know what the tariff is till it arrives. No, oh, they're all fraudulent. They're fraudulent. I mean, all these uh, signs, they're all private anyway, you know, so they're not. You know, you're only tricked into entering these jurisdictions because it's a... So really, what, you, what you're telling me is that actually, if you're driving on the motorway, you can try this, ladies and gentlemen, if you are brave <laughs> enough. What you should do is as you approach one of these gantries where there's a camera on it, you should stop the car, get out the <laughs> yes, car, and say, I'd like to negotiate the contract <laughs> yeah. before I go underneath, just so that it's fair for everybody. I just negotiate. How much do you want? If I drive under... <laughs> yes, all right, kick back. Yes, yes, no, this isn't... Uh, I don't want oil. This is a different thing. There's a different yeah, one, no, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> this is a different one. This is the, the I'm trying to help you lot. I've got to be super glue. Get... <laughs> I'm going to glue this... myself to the M1 until we get. There's the six thousand of us done. who want to go past this now. Six thousand. All right, we get. Can we do it a bit cheaper? <laughs> How much for seven thousand? Yeah, is bolt that listing. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's just do that. Let's Everyone vote. just stop. I just say, well, we're happy to negotiate. And you can imagine some bloke eventually turning up in a Land Rover going, oh, uh, what's this all about then? Well, we've got, you put a speed camera up here. Yeah. Well, I'm not prepared to go under it until I've negotiated how much the fee is. Yeah. Can you tell... Well, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I'll talk to your chief executive. Oh, he's not going to come out yet. Well, there's, there's more than 7,000 vehicles now. There's about 10,000 all blocked up all the yeah. way around the M25. What are you going to do about it, mate? <laughs> I might get lynched by the drivers themselves who will be going on sod this. We're just... Unless they're all on your side and they all Unless, want to start yeah. negotiating. And if they did that with the ULEZ, you know, <laughs> if they... I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? If, if the charges aren't there and you don't know and you say, do you know what, actually... Don't want a contract with you, nope. so bog off. Correct, correct. And you can demand the, to see the original contract. Where does it? Where, how am I obligated by you, Les? In fact, how am I obligated by the speed limits? You know, and all mm. the rest. Of, how? And they won't provide it for you, otherwise that the, the, the well, fraud they can't. Is, can they, they can't. That's right. The fraud will be exposed. But absolutely right. So, um, but, oh, yeah, just one last thing on the final mm. final points is obviously if. You are asked to pay. I'm going to get the two two thousand pounds up again. There we oh, go. Yes, yes. Oh, upside please. down. There we go. There we oh, go. Please, no, please. Because please <laughs> anyone see that? <laughs> I've got a wife and two eyelids to support. <laughs> yeah, got a van to pay for. <laughs> got a van to protect. <laughs> got to buy some more super glue when I do uh, another. Do you know, I've got six blokes standing around my van, twenty four seven. Six very big, <laughs> beefy blokes. I mean, admittedly, they're only about this high and made of plastic, but I yeah. put them around there as security. It's about all I can afford. Oh, well, all right then. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll have to tip you some money. <laughs> Thank you. So that's what. So you let's tip me some of that um, that lovely SFT money. Yeah, um, SFT. That's right. Yeah. We should print our own notes. That's we? A we good could idea. have our own bank. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a gold bank. The SFT. The SFT bank for note. me. That's We're creating want. things all day long now, aren't God, we? SFT note. You don't need to tune into any other channel yeah. whatsoever. Oh, we got it Ideas are coming. Up. We should do a Pete and. It's like Ian a Pete and Dud show, isn't it? I think we should. You know? So the SFT note, I think we should do that. That'd be good. That would be good. So, um, but Somebody yeah, could I... design us a logo for the SFT. That would be great. We'll do that. We'll, we'll create an SFT logo. I get my, I get my team on it. <laughs> get the team on it. There we go. SFT. But... Redeemable in all good sovereign shops. <laughs> Yeah, you never know. I mean, there'll be yes. certain farm shops and food shops. Oh, yeah, we'll go for that. Anyway, sorry. The last part of yeah, this thing. The last on, part. The last yeah, part. Here we go. We'll, they'll we'll finish up on that. Did, diddled them otherwise. Because, again, this is another thing. It's mindsets. You know, if you are being asked to pay, yeah. always ask who you are paying to. Not a what. As a as who. in a per, as it, oh, I nearly said it. Yeah. As in a man or woman. Man or woman, living, breathing. That's it. That's right. Who am I paying? Give Absolutely. me a name. Give me a name. And if there's no name, there's no claim. Very true. So um, there my it is, everybody. My blood flows and my skin creeps. <laughs> uh, no, that's not quite right. Because uh, <laughs> I'm a member of the SFT. SFT, that's Don't right. Don't you know. Should we do a Masonic handshake? And then, and then S SFT oh, gosh. handshake or nod or something. So when you're walking down the street and you see another member of the SFT, yeah, you have a know. special a special site. It's well, I mean, clearly you, to yes. get onto the uh, the thirty third parallel of the SFT, you have to be completely bald. That's right, or as near to bald as you can possibly be. <laughs> that is uh, that is obviously the, the how to get onto the SFT if you want to bank with me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, thirty three degrees of the SFT. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> So and the exhausted leader can uh, tell us <laughs> more about it. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, dear, I don't oh, want to be a leader of anything. Just, no, I, thanks. I just want to cause trouble. <laughs> it's bad enough just being an, or an ordinary everyday bloke in this world yeah. without having to try and lead people anywhere. Cool. Blimey. Yeah. 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 I just want to. Especially get up, SFT yeah. people who all have their own nuances and way of doing <laughs> things. 
<laughs> oh, I'm not going to do it like that because I've worked out my own system. That's yeah, if you right. roll a dice and you catch a flea yeah. and you jump on the back of a cat, I can work out a different remedy. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. OK. Well, you better come on the show then. That yeah, sounds very that's entertaining. Do, 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 interview them. <laughs> Let's hear about your quick. new system. Exactly. Well, this, this is great. So this is something, the, the, the remedy that you've got there, this is something that people can uh, do immediately. And, yes. of course, the best thing to do is to go to the sovereignproject.live Go and get download all of that. Take time. Yes. I know. I know. I've laughed. I've laughed about a bit, but but it's been a stressful day elsewhere. So it's nice to have a bit of somebody to yeah, have a laugh with. Have a bit of banter. Um, and and yeah, take the take the um, time to understand it. Look up the legislation. See it's there on the website. Don't just take Pete's word for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and go through it and get that mindset because the mindset of being a sovereign individual free from tyranny is something that does take a leap of faith to a degree because we've been so put into this narrow band right from the time we went to school yeah and 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 it doesn't help that our parents also had that done to them true and so some of that so it does take a bit of time to go actually rip up that old world whoops and um work to the new world yes Absolutely. And enter the new world. Yeah, exactly. Brilliant. Uh, it's brilliant, Pete. Nice one. It's been it's been fun. And the next <laughs> time we get you on, we want to see the the Star Trek outfit <laughs> with the SFT logo. SFT. Yeah, the, and Thunderbird. You know the Thunderbirds used to have the yes. um, you know like the Miss World thing going across them, whatever you call that, the sash. The sash. Didn't they? And we'll have strings on us. <laughs> SFT. <laughs> SFT. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> sovereign it. free truth movement there's nobody pulling our strings no that is true <laughs> like Pinocchio become a real boy yes so there we go well I have to say that you see you can have fun with the truth you can you whereas can. it's very difficult to have fun with lies oppression and tyranny so yes. um, yeah thank you for that you've lightened my day <laughs> and you've given me a remedy out of all of this nonsense which has been brilliant yeah, no problem. So I'll put the links in the description, of course. Um, people can download all of that and um, they can get those notices written. Remember the, uh, is it, um, what do you think is the best? Wait for the, wait for the bills to arrive. Yeah. yeah. Because they'll be coming on people's doorsteps ready for April the 1st on the council tax and then re just respond to them. Yeah, I mean, it depends on the situation, I suppose, because there's probably people out there who are, struggling right now yes so i would say you know here's the information we've done it for you and use it however you wish by the way this is not legal advice you know disclaimer and all that oh yeah this is a, this is not legal advice no but it might work you never know because it's, it's just pointing at the statues and acts of those get it yes that's right you know we're, we're not telling people what to do they can make their own decisions that's right. You know, we're using their own system against them. So you've got nothing to lose. But I think, yeah, you've got a good point. So when April comes along, um, you know, instead of sending off your check or whatever, yeah. send off your notice. So um, Send them a bit of comedy. Send them off. Oh, and just one last thing I just forgot to mention is mm. if you are alone out there and you, you go, oh, I'm a little bit unsure, then yeah. get in contact with us because what we're trying to do is we're trying to set up chess clubs across the country. You know, we've already got a few set up. So chess this clubs. is, yeah, we've called it chess clubs. It's um, little rook to kings one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a knight to spades <laughs> club. Oh no, wait, I'm mixing my metaphors. Here. <laughs> we call it so, chess yeah, club. So yeah, so it's chess clubs. Chess okay. club, yeah. Chess clubs. Chess so club, sure everybody. Got a good chess. <laughs> oh no, not that kind of a chess. <laughs> so chess as in yeah. Chess club. And all you got to do is, if you want to get involved, try and find a local venue, like a corner of a pub or something, and where you can meet up once a week and have drinks with someone else, and then you can share this information and you can all work together. And you can use the Sovereign Network to connect, and that's what we'll that do. That is a very good idea, because people do are on their own, a lot of them, and oh, they yeah. think, oh, blimey, can I do this, and what you know, if it goes wrong, and what have you. Whereas if you do connect... And it is so much better, I think, if you can find people face to face, as you say, yes. in a pub and you can share ideas and comments and, and share the correspondence and say, can you check my spelling? Yes. All that. 
because there are Telegram groups and WhatsApp groups, but it's so non-personal. Non-personal, yes. Yeah, yeah. And it is much better if you can get together around a table. It is. Um, and then you can, you know, and if something like the enforcement officers come, at least then you can have an emergency number of people who can turn up and, and go com more confidently than you as you're being scared, rigid by these nasty brutes. The others can be going, <laughs> it's all right, I'm stepping into my power here. Yeah. You leave my mate alone. That's right. <laughs> and, and that's effectively what's going on, isn't it? You're saying you have no jurisdiction. Well, show us the contract then. Where is this? Where is the invoice? Where is all of the, and, you know, and here's the legislation. And by the way, this is harassment. Yes. And all of that. Absolutely. Got, I just noticed we've gone over the air by a little bit, but... Um, oh, a few it's, jokes it's and right. laughs, it's all good. Yes, my goodness. What's a few we've extra just, minutes? <laughs> we've just saved them two grand, haven't we? We have. <laughs> there we are. You can so, tip me a drink, everyone. <laughs> that's it. And don't forget, of course, as well. <laughs> this only works if you get the appropriate haircut. Yes. That's uh, part of the SFT uh, inaugural <laughs> meeting, first rule of Prince. First rule of the SFT movement. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Anyway, Pete, it's been an absolute joy to talk to you. Um, nice it's one. been fun. But actually, it has been very serious as well. Do go and check out the stuff. It's on the website. Um, I'll put the link in the description. Until next time, Pete. Um, uh, until next time, thank you so much. And I'll be back with more monologues and the usual nonsense that I do. Um, until then, from Pete and I, take care, look after yourselves. Good luck with all the info. Bye for now.